All of the major news stories made simple and easy for your listening pleasure. We'll break it down for you in keywords. Noaram joins us for keyword news. Good morning. Good morning, Eunice. It's been a while. It's great to see you. How you been? I've been good. I am so happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, we have a plethora of stories to get through, so mm-hmm. why don't we get right to it? Korea has been under pressure of rising prices and inflation for quite a while now. Research data showing that consumer prices have risen across all cities. Run us through the numbers. Uh, Yeah, Korea cities and provinces uh, saw a rise in consumer prices in the third quarter of this year. This comes amid soaring prices of oil and raw materials across the world, so it's not just Korea uh, that's suffering from this rising in price. Now, according to Statistics Korea, the consumer price index in uh, the third quarter edged up 2.6% from a year ago. Inflation was actually worse in uh, Jeju Island at some 3% due to rising oil prices and dining out costs as well. Uh, Seoul saw the the smallest rise, in fact, of 1.9%, which is quite surprising on the back of the reduced cost of utilities. Uh, It was also, uh, it was the only city to record CPI increase in the 1% range as well, compared to all the other cities across the nation. You'd expect Seoul to probably have the highest, but it actually turned out to have the smallest rise. Hmm. Uh, This comes also as consumer sentiment rebounded overall during the same period as well, uh, especially as we in this living with COVID-19 scheme. Uh, a lot of more people are out and about and spending money and uh, consumer sentiment has, of course, uh, increased because of that. Uh, and therefore, retail sales have also surged more than 5% with Busan seeing the biggest rise, in fact. So more people out shopping in Busan. Interesting, interesting yeah. figures, especially uh, Jeju seeing the worst of the mm. rising costs. I wonder if that has anything to do with base effect. Mm. Um, let's go ahead and move on to our second headline. Korea has, of course, also been suffering from a declining population, but it seems that there is a drop of people in their 20s and 30s in particular. So what do we know about this? Yes, uh, the number of young people in Korea is declining at a race rate that is faster than any other age group. Now, according to research firm Leaders Index, the number of people uh, aged 20 to 39 in the country came to around 13.4 million as of last month. That's down almost 5% from four years ago. And that dip is almost 15 times larger than the 0.32% drop in the total population during the same period. Now, the age group is also taking up less proportion of the total population as well, dropping 1.2 percentage points on year to 26 percent. Leaders Index warns such a drop could possibly pose a risk to the local economy, of course, as this age group is supposed to play a major role in economic activities in the coming decades. They are the future of the nation. Uh, The lack of jobs is also uh, said to contribute to the reduction of of young people as well. Of course, many job opportunities have been lacking, especially recently. Uh, Many people in their 20s and 30s are choosing to leave the country as well to find better opportunities. So that's probably where the reduction is coming from. Um, And also a lot of young people are leaving the capital as well. A lot of people are actually moving out to the outskirts. Yeah, the Korean headline calls us the MZ Sede, right? Yeah. Which is Generation Z and, mm. and Millennials. So uh, some of them are actually already very much uh, involved in the economic uh, comings and goings. So mm. uh, certainly this is a number to watch mm-hmm. and a little bit concerning as well. Mm-hmm. Um, leaders of Korea and Costa Rica will hold a face to face summit in the coming hours. So what mm. can we expect, Adam? Yes, the Costa Rican president, Carlos Alvarado. Uh, Alvarado is in Korea for a four day state visit uh, through Thursday. He actually arrived uh, a couple days ago. He was invited, uh, oh sorry, uh, yesterday rather. He was invited by President Moon ahead of the 60th anniversary next year of the two countries' diplomatic ties. Um, Now, the Blue House says they'll discuss partnerships for future growth in fields like bio and smart agriculture. They are also expected to discuss cooperation in healthcare, infrastructure, space, as well as the hydrogen economy, something that the Korean government is trying to 
push uh, very hard with. Uh, Alvarado's visit is his first to Asia, actually, since taking office three years ago. Uh, Meanwhile, Alvarado has become an honorary citizen of Seoul City. He received the citizenship from Mayor Orseun yesterday. He is the third Costa Rican president to receive the honour. And, in fact, Alvarado actually drew attention after saying in a speech last year that Costa Rica aspires to become the Korea of South America. Uh, during the awarding ceremony, Alvarado said he made the remark because Costa Rica shares key principles with Korea, such as democracy, technology and economic development. Mm. Well, welcome to Alvarado, President Alvarado, for becoming a honorary citizen of Seoul indeed. Uh, let's turn to some tense diplomacy ongoing. Korea and Japan held working-level diplomatic talks and Seoul amid that renewed spat over the Tokdo Islets. So what is the latest on this? Yeah, so the key word here is Korea-Japan talks and the talks between Lee sang and the Foreign Ministry's Director General for Asian and Pacific Affairs as well as his Japanese counterpart Takahiro Funakoshi came after tensions resurfaced following Japan's protest. In fact, over the recent visit to Tokdo by Korea's police chief, Tokyo wasn't happy about that. Uh, friction over Tokdo was on full display play last week as well when the Japanese Foreign Minister Takeo Mori boycotted what was supposed to be a trilateral press conference involving his Korean and U.S. counterparts in Washington. Uh, it ended up being a Wendy Sherman just holding the press conference herself. Now, during yesterday's meeting, Funakoshi repeated Tokyo's stance on the island, uh, again making uh, unwarranted claims to them. Uh, e said that Seoul can never accept any Japanese claim to Tokto. He also stressed the need to accelerate bilateral talks to address the two countries' protracted rows over Japan's wartime forced labor and sexual slavery, of course these historical uh, tensions as well. Uh, in addition, he reiterated Korea's opposition to Japan's plan to discharge radioactive water into the ocean from its crippled Fukushima power plant. That's also another area of contention between the two countries. Now, despite their differences though over historical issues and others, the two sides did share the view on the need for continued communication to address those issues. That has been kind of uh, the 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 stance um, for a long time now, but it seems that there's no fruition from any of these talks so far. Uh, meanwhile, the nuclear chiefs of both countries held a separate meeting and they agreed to pursue talks on North Korea as well. Mm, all right. And next, President Moon Jae-in has not held back in criticizing police for a recent inadequate response to a violent uh, altercation among neighbors that had left one person in a vegetative state in Incheon. So what did the president have to say and catch us up on the details of the situation? Right, so the key word here is poor police response and Moon ordered police to strengthen education and training to ensure that this sort of thing does not happen again. Uh, he was being quoted by the presidential spokesperson Pak Young mi Now, Moon's reprimanding of police came after a Male and female police officer were dispatched to a four-story apartment in Incheon uh, after receiving a noise complaint. Now, the top floor resident came down uh, uh, with wielding a knife, in fact, and stabbed the third floor resident's wife. The female officer who was at the scene, however, allegedly left the scene without trying to bring the attacker under control. Whether that was out of fear uh, remains to be seen. The male officer who was outside the building at the time was also accused of failing to go upstairs in time to help the third floor resident, uh, although he did, but it was a bit too late. Uh, this is not only uh, the this is not the only case of violent crime recently as well that should and could have been prevented by police. Uh, over the weekend, a man in his 30s was arrested for killing his ex-girlfriend with a knife at her studio apartment in central Seoul. The victim was known to be under police protection, in fact, after suffering from several months of dating violence, as well as threats and stalking by the suspect as well. The victim actually had made an emergency call twice, in fact, with a smartwatch that was provided by the police, but officers arrived there just too late, and police blamed a technical defect in the device. And that, that uh, issue also sparked public outcry. So police at the moment, they are kind of in the hot seat. 
Oh, you can say that again. And the police commissioner came out to uh, issue his apology as well. Uh, Mm -hmm. Obviously, the public relies on the police to Mm -hmm. keep the state of peace. Um, So hopefully we will see some needed uh, changes on that as well. The final keyword for today, online fraud. Police say they will make online accounts suspected of being created to commit fraud available to the public? That's right. Uh, the move comes amid a rise in fraud in second-hand markets, uh, such as Tangan Market and Chungonara. Uh, other markets are available, by the way. Uh, and there's also been a rise in online transactions amid the pandemic as well. Um, some 20% increase in these kind of platforms. Now, police will allow people to go to the site cyber.go.kr to check suspected fake and fraudulent accounts. Those accounts can be checked through either phone numbers or bank accounts details, etc. Um, and they can check if there have been any records of reports of fraudulent activities related to those accounts, so the public can check them. Uh, now, also from next year, any suspicious postings and the related account will also be blocked from personal trading platforms as the ones that I mentioned uh, before. So obviously there's been a lot of problems arising from these platforms. A lot of people make living from uh, a living from these platforms as well, but of course there are a lot of fake and fraudulent accounts out there, So, uh, and a lot of people fall victim to it. So that's why police are trying to crack down on that. Indeed, a lot of these uh, attacks also coming from outside of the country as well. So hopefully this website will be helpful for those who um, are... Suspicious of a reach out, mm. whether on Tangan Market mm-hmm. or um, otherwise on, on their cell phones as well. Again, that is cyber.co.kr. Geo. <laughs> Geo, yes, yeah. I can read. Cyber.go.kr. <laughs> yeah. You may need a Korean friend to help you navigate through it. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any English service yet, but if, uh, yeah, if you do have a Korean friend who can help out and if you are um, worried about such actions, then of course do seek that help if you can. Yes. Thank you so much for that advice and mm-hmm. the headlines today you're in Keywords, mm-hmm. Adam. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.